America's Grand Slam, the late summer ritual when the game's best gathered to test their skill, character, and will to win. This year, one player arrived seeking the elusive prize of his nation's championship, and by the time 14 days had expired, he would etch his indelible mark on both the 1994 U.S. Open Tennis Championships and the game itself. <laughs> I'm here with the band. USA Network presents the 1994 U.S. Open Tennis Championships. Simply awesome. As he prepared for the 1994 U.S. Open, Andre Agassi wondered, could this finally be the year? Agassi's previous performances in New York had produced mixed results. Back in 1988, Andre was already a revered teenage idol. On court, his monstrous ground strokes led the way during a prime time thrashing of the legendary Jimmy Connors. A year later, Connors had a chance for revenge. But once again, the boy wonder prevailed in a memorable five-set battle. The following year, 1990, American Pete Sampras stifled Agassiz's bid for the title. Soundly beaten, Andre was left to ponder if he would ever hoist the U.S. Open trophy. Nineteen ninety one and ninety three were U.S. Opens that Agassi would like to forget. Bitter first round losses to Aaron Crickstein. And then Tomas Enkvist left a disconsolate Agassi searching for answers. It's unfortunate to come here and wanna wanna win the tournament and and uh Gets gets surprised like that. It's dramatic, you know. I mean, you win, you feel like you're on top of the world, and you lose, and you feel like I do right now. Though he came in unseated, Agassiz's arrival in the Big Apple created its usual stir. Who was the favorite? How about the defending champ, Pete Sampras? Standing tall with his number one ranking, Sampras was voted most likely to succeed despite a nagging ankle injury. Then there was Jim Currier, but which Currier would show up? The feisty fighter or the player on an emotional roller coaster who just weeks earlier seemed to have given up all hope? The rackets are in the bag right now. They're going to stay there until, uh, until my heart tells me to pick them up again. And I don't know if that's going to be one day, one week, one month, one year, ten years, I don't know. But they'll stay in the bag until I, I'm, I'm hungry to come back and play, and I don't know when that's going to be. But guess whose rackets came out of the bag when open time finally came around? Want some other favorites? How about the fiery Bodice Becca? Or the fleet-footed Michael Chang? Now the women. Martina Navratilova was unfortunately a no-show. She'd be missed. For active favorites, how about the Spaniards? Two women of extreme talent having extraordinary years. Together, Conchita Martinez 
and Arantxa Sanchez Vicario had captured Wimbledon and the French Open respectively. Viva España! Two teenagers also highly touted were French Open finalist Mary Pierce and Lindsay Davenport looking for her day in the sun. The 18-year-old entered as the highest seated American woman. But no one was more closely watched than Steffi Graf. The defending champion arrived with an ailing back and a sense of vulnerability. Crushed by Pierce at the French, shocked in the first round at Wimbledon. For Graf, the early rounds here would be critical. Let the games begin. also known as Bob. Bob was the unlucky soul whose very first Grand Slam singles match pitted him against one of the game's hardest hitters. This match passed Bob by in a scant 82 minutes. So what about Bob? He turned out to be Andre's first round victim. Agassi won easily in three, six three, six two, six love. So for Andre, relief at breaking that first round jinx and a spot in round two. Agassi a shoe in? Not quite yet. <laughs> 